Hi friends, and welcome to week five of the 2024 Baking Challenge. We've been through an entire month of brand new bakes, and I hope that you've enjoyed every single second of it and have been left with some very tasty treats. It's a new month, it's a new bake. Week five is mini raspberry palmiers. Yes, I looked up how to pronounce that word on Google. I'm probably still butchering it. I don't speak French and that's okay. So is it a cookie? Is it a pastry? I kind of feel like it's a little bit of both and you'll see when you look at the recipe. I do know that it does go by a couple other names including French hearts and palm leaves. And of course the cats are now into things. <laughs> so these are supposed to be raspberry. I'm gonna start off right from the bat telling you I could not find freeze dried raspberries. So mine are gonna be strawberry, which is great. I have a strawberry lover in the house. So get your tools together for this one. You're gonna need, uh, for the dough anyways, you're gonna need, the recipe calls for a mixer. You could do it by hand. It's probably gonna be a little bit of a struggle. I'm gonna use my mixer. You're going to need a rolling pin, a mat, some plastic wrap, flour for dusting, all of the ingredients, and um, did I say plastic wrap? Because we're gonna make this dough and then it's gotta sit in the fridge for an hour. Sorry about that. I tend to go for these recipes that have a long break in the middle. Um, I will warn you, it's an hour in the fridge to rest before you can assemble the cookies and then once you get them assembled, it's another hour in the freezer. So if you've ever made like slice and bake cookies, you know how they have to be really frozen in order to be able to slice them? That's kind of what we're doing here. Um, just in a little bit of a different shape. So get your ingredients, get your tools, and let's get baking. Look, the photo is what really won me over on this. I mean, I kind of like to go with a theme and since this is February and we have Valentine's Day, everybody's favorite Hallmark holiday, I decided that the first two recipes should have a little bit of romance involved and what's more romantic than heart-shaped French pastry cookies. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna start off by making the dough. Now remember what I said earlier, your dough is gonna to have to rest in the fridge for an hour before we can work with it. So plan ahead. You've got at least two hours in the fridge slash freezer for this dessert. Um, honestly, the recipe says that once you get the dough done and the cookie assembled, you could leave that in the freezer overnight too. Um, so we are starting off with two and one fourth cups of all purpose flour. We have a fourth a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of baking powder. So that's all mixed up in the same bowl for me. <laughs> all right, but just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and raise my bowl and mix it up, just stir it. Just, we're just stirring, okay? Next up is our butter. This is 14, no, 12, 14. Let me look at the recipe because now I can't remember. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. That's the wrong thing. See, I started this without having 12 tablespoons of butter cut up into little pats, okay? Gotta cut it up first because again, it's kind of like the pastry crust that we've made a couple times now. So you're gonna want that butter to get little and starting it out little helps the process. All right, this says we're gonna add this one by one, not two by two, one by one, until it's all incorporated. So I'm gonna kick my mixer up a little bit. This is a time consuming process. Um, I guess I didn't have my bowl on there all the way. This is, cutting butter in takes a while, especially if you have to do it one little chunk at a time. Your butter needs to be cold. And now we wait. <laughs> this is the hard part for me. My instinct is to just dump it all in at once. Um, but I know that's not what the recipe says to do. And I'm trying really hard, other than flavors, I'm trying really hard to follow the recipes so I don't have quite as many chaos baking moments. Um, but this is absolute torture. 
my, my butter is not breaking up and I'm sitting here with a plate of butter that I just want to toss in there because there are other things I would like to do with my morning. <laughs> so that's okay. It's okay. And you know what? Honestly, if my mixer doesn't do this, I'll just get my pastry cutter out and uh, go from there. Oof, don't touch the butter. It melts. Remember, the butter needs to be cold. My mixer is not doing well at this. It is doing okay, but not as quickly as I would like for it to. Okay, that's helping a little bit more, but making a bigger mess. It's all right. We're just going to go with it. These two are stuck together. <laughs> They're just going to go in together then. Little mistakes, little things, you know, hopefully are not going to change the outcome of this recipe. You know me, chaos baking for the win. And if you don't know me, then you should go back and watch the first four videos while I mess up just about everything. Learning how to bake and cook is a process. Nobody gets it right on the first time. That's why all of these famous chefs go to culinary school to figure it out. And I don't want to go to culinary school. I just want to bake good things. So here we go. Now, we also have three fourths of a cup of sour cream going into this dough. No water, but if you see my water cup here, it's because last time we made dough, um, we made a pastry dough. Mine was too dry and I had to add water. I have a very dry house. It's winter. Um, so, you know, improvise a little. Okay, none of those are cut up. None of them. Not one. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the first few I put in. So I'm going to kick this back on high and let it do its thing. Well, it makes mess all over the counter. The recipe says dime size. So that's what I'm going for here. Some of it is dime size. Some of it is quarter size. And I have one that looks like a big boulder in there. So maybe that's why we should put it in one at a time. And here I go baking without, a, without an apron on. Do you have a favorite apron? Because I really like the one that I have, and at the same time, I kind of want something that's a little easier to put off and on. Um, so if you have a favorite rough apron that you have, um, do me a favor and drop that in the comments. Let me know what it is, because I am always, I feel like I'm yelling over this thing. I am always on the lookout for um, a new apron that I'm gonna like. <laughs> so that's, that's the thing, I'm kind of picky. All right, I have this uh, as good as it's gonna get. So we're gonna go ahead and add our sour cream a little bit at a time. Um, so I have my teeny tiny little teaspoon in here. One thing I love about these measuring cups that I have, um, this measuring cup right here is three fourths of a cup exactly. So. Measuring cups will usually come in the four, a set of four. You've got your, um, you've got your one fourth cup, your two thirds, your three, wait a minute, no, your half and then your cup. This one has like eight different measuring cups. So it's pretty great. Okay, now it's starting to look a little bit better. I may not need water after all, which is happy because the recipe absolutely does not call for water. Ooh, it is definitely incorporating here. It smells, so I'm not a huge fan of sour cream. 
Um, I guess it's fine in baked goods, but you're not gonna see me putting it on like a baked potato or anything. Oh, I don't wanna set that there. I don't mind running the dishwasher after I cook if it saves me from making a mess on the counters. A uh, little bit more, I think. Got some sour cream kind of hanging out on the walls, but this is definitely a dough. It's a stiff dough, um, but I don't feel like I need to add any liquid to it. Ooh, that might have been too high. We're done. Okay, dough is done. Gears might incorporate better if you actually follow the recipe and don't put all the butter in at one time. Come on. <laughs> I can't see to get this off of here. Ugh, and my dough is in the way. It is a very, very stiff, hard dough. <laughs> I need to get it out of here so I can get my paddle off. There we go. Okay. That's done. Just gonna put that over here. Okay, next up, what does it say? Lightly floured surface. Um, this says parchment paper, but I've got my mat. I love my mat. You are gonna need your rolling pin, but not at first. So you're gonna get your hands dirty, make sure your hands are clean. What we're going to do is we're going to pat this into a four by 12 rectangle. So I'm lucky I've got my, um, I really don't know why they did that. They've got inches across the top here and then down here. So your one is here and here. I really feel like that should be reversed. Um, Cause now I have to do everything backwards in my brain, which honestly, maybe this is the right way and my brain is doing it backwards anyways. I am dyslexic, so that is a possibility. Okay. If your dough is too hard to work with because it's really sticky and soft, go ahead and just toss it in the fridge like this for 15, 20 minutes. But what we're gonna do here is we are going to pat this out 14 inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's really long, but it's also, okay, four inches is not as wide as you would think. So where did, where was my 14 at? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. My 14 is at 7. So I need to stretch this all the way down to 7 and 4. And again, I'm not great with shapes, so we're just going to just going to make this as good as we can. <laughs> okay. Four by 12, that's, and then it says to fold it in thirds like a letter. So over that end, and I guess over that end, and then roll it over with a rolling pin to seal it and flatten it slightly. I wish it would tell me like, what slightly means to them because I'm not sure. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it here. Kind of trying to keep mine in a rectangle shape and that's perfectly fine. Well, I feel like mine is definitely sealed. I can pick it up and I don't see the seams on the side, although there are a few on the bottom. Maybe I overflowered my surface. This isn't really, despite the butter and the sour cream, it's not really what I would call a sticky dough. So divide the dough in half, wrapping in plastic and refrigerate for an hour um, or overnight. You could refrigerate this overnight. I'm not going to. It doesn't say which way to divide it. Like long ways. Um, Oh, 
Okay, so we're basically making two logs. So I guess it's not gonna matter too much. I'm gonna go ahead and cut mine in half this way. So I feel like that's just gonna be easier. I probably shouldn't have used that sharp knife on my nice mat, but I did. So, all right, time for some plastic wrap. We're gonna put this in the fridge. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make the filling ahead of time. It's pretty easy, you just need a a food processor. Oh my gosh, does anybody else absolutely hate um, plastic wrap? Because <laughs> I hate plastic wrap so much. I do like that they have the cutters now. If you're my age, you remember when they didn't have that and you just had to fight with it. And I would always end up cutting myself with the, the teeth of the cutter. All right, that's one. Honestly, the only time I ever use plastic wrap anymore is for stuff like this. So I think um, this box of plastic wrap I've had for two years now. Pretty sure that it's been in the drawer for two years and I haven't used it all. Although I am starting to see the roll. So it's probably time to get some more. Okay. I'm gonna clean this up, stick my dough in the fridge, grab my food processor, my powdered sugar, and my freeze-dried strawberries, and I'll see you back. And through the magic of video, my kitchen is cleaned up and I'm ready to make the filling. We need a half a cup of slightly crushed freeze-dried raspberries. I got strawberries because I couldn't find raspberries. And I was trying to figure out how to lightly crush these without making a big mess. I'm I opened the bag. I've got a little bit of an air pocket here, just a little tiny bit. Potato masher. I'm just gonna, just gonna kind of mush the bag a little because these were giant chunks of strawberry. So let's see if that worked. Hopefully it did. It'd be a nice non, yeah, okay. Lightly crushed, yes. Now, I don't have a regular standard food processor. What I have is this fantastic thing from Hamilton Beach. Uh, this comes with an immersion blender, a whisk. It's got all kinds of fantastic stuff, plus this little food processor. It's this or my Ninja blender, which is fine too. Um, I have some bougie stuff in this kitchen. It's okay, I love it. So we've got our half a cup of Slightly, oh, that's more than half a cup. I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> Slightly crushed strawberries. <laughs> I made a mess. Honestly, well, freeze dried stuff. Um, we tried freeze dried candy for the first time in December last year, and it is so neat that I kind of really want a freeze dryer, but they're really expensive. Um, Still, I keep eyeing it, thinking about all the garden produce that I end up giving away or feeding to the chickens because we just can't eat it. All right, so you've also got a half of a cup of powdered sugar. I buy mine by the bag because I go through it so much. Let me get that off of there. All right, and you're just gonna pulse this until it all turns into a powder. Let's see, how do I lock this? Did I get it right? I did not get it right. Hold on, I can figure this out. There we go, okay. So, I'm anticipating that the sugar is going to turn like a, like a pink color. And the great thing about this, because it's not a full big food processor, is that I can just pick it up and shake it. All right, let's take a look. Nope, don't want to do that. just want to undo this. Oh, yeah, it's like a light pink um, sugar powder that smells faintly of strawberries. Honestly, I kind of want to add more strawberries to it, even though I added more than is necessary. I'm going to stop myself. <laughs> oh gosh, because I just inhaled it too. Tastes like strawberries also. Okay, I'm just going to leave this in the container until we need it. 
um, in an hour, as soon as I can get the lid back on. There we go, nope. Boy, I'm just messing this up today. That's okay, that's good enough. So just leave this in the container. We're gonna need it in an hour when we come back. You're gonna want sugar, granulated sugar. You're gonna want your rolling mat, your rolling pin, your dough. Um, and I guess that's it. Well, and your filling too. Um, check the recipe though. What are we doing next? Let's see here. Uh, yeah, so you're gonna want your, your rolling pin, your rolling mat. We're gonna sprinkle half of this, we're gonna roll it out. Yeah, it's gonna be a whole process, but that's what you're gonna need, plus more plastic wrap because we're gonna be sticking the finished shape into the freezer so that it'll hold its shape for when we go to bake it because we're gonna roll it into that heart shape or the palm shape and then we're going to freeze it and then we slice it before we bake it. So anyway, get your stuff cleaned up and I'll see you back in an hour. So it's been a little over an hour and I got out one of my little wrapped pieces of dough here. So what you're gonna do, instead of using flour on your mat, you're gonna sprinkle it with granulated sugar. We're making a cookie dough, it's nice and sweet. Then you're going to unwrap your dough, which is a neat trick if you don't remember how you wrapped it. There we go. And you're gonna throw it on the counter no, really. Um, okay, so you got your dough. You're gonna sprinkle your dough with a little bit of granulated sugar. Not all sugar is created equal. You've got brown sugar, which is, comes in both light and dark. You've got your granulated sugar, your powdered sugar, and then you also have granulated cane sugar. And I got this out because I'm debating kind of pressing it into the edges just a little bit and seeing what happens, because you know I can't just follow a recipe like I'm supposed to. So, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more sugar here. And then we're gonna roll this out to four by 12, I want to say. Let me look at the recipe real fast. Okay, four by 14 by 17, that is, that's gonna be a thin cookie. I'm actually gonna take my little should have done this earlier because this takes forever to get these off. Um, I'm gonna take my little roll measurements off of here and we're just gonna go for it. Let me take the other one off. Oof. And then let's get rolling. So seven by 14, that is quite a bit. Good grief. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it goes down to seven on that side, and then I've got my seven on this side. And because we're working with a nice cold dough, you're really gonna have to lean into it. <laughs> um, keep your other hunk of dough in the fridge while you work on this one. Basically, this is gonna be two batches of cookies. So we're gonna end up with two logs of palmiers that are gonna get put, wrapped up in plastic wrap and then put in the freezer. Whew, it's arm day here. <laughs> Okay. I don't quite have my seven inch thickness here. That's all right. I'll get there. Just give me a minute. Okay. Now what you could do is you could cut it so it's a little bit more of a rectangle and I think I'm gonna do that. Great way to cut your cookie dough is with a pizza cutter. So I'm gonna kinda just square off. I'm not pressing down too hard because I really don't want to, um, 
really don't want to cut through my mat. It's going to be a little bit more cleaner edges and I'm not going to toss this dough because I may need it for the other batch since I kind of just eyeballed it and you know how I am about eyeballing measurements. Okay, here we go. Here is our dough. Okay, that looks so pretty. Um, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of sugar on here. It doesn't say to do that because we're gonna be doing our topping. Um, and I know that some of the sugar got rolled in here, but I didn't use a ton because I knew this dough was not gonna be very sticky. All right, and then it says to dust half, remember, because we're gonna need the other half, but dust half of your mixture over the dough like so using my teeny tiny spoon for this oh if you are using a see i should have i'm gonna have to have a future katie come in earlier in this recipe um but in case i forget to do that if you are using a freeze-dried fruit that has a lot of seeds you're going to once once you get to this point you're going to want to put the whole thing through a mesh strainer with a whisk so that you can keep those seeds out of it. Seeds can add a lot of bitterness um, when you're baking with them. So now I'm just gonna kind of fluff this out some. I'm, I'm kind of pressing mine in a little bit. Remember, these are mini cookies, so they're not gonna be these giant cookies. Okay, I'm gonna kind of square up my dough here. So I know that my center of the dough is right here. It's important to know where your center is. And then you're gonna take each edge and roll it until you get to the center, and then you stop and you do the other edge. So, here we go. Try to do it without breaking your dough. And you're probably only gonna be able to get like a roll and a half before you hit the center again, because these are mini cookies. Mini means small. All right, that's kind of, I think I overrolled that side a little, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna do the same over here. I really probably could have rolled this dough out a little bit more to make it slightly thinner but I've never made a palmier, so who knows? My cookies may end up just being a lot of dough. Okay. And here, I'm gonna lift this up and show you so you can kind of see there's gonna be our shape right there. All right, now that we have this rolled up, <laughs> you're gonna wrap it in plastic wrap. Okay, we're gonna wrap it in plastic wrap and then throw it in the freezer and then start on your second block of dough. More plastic wrap, isn't that always a treat? I'm gonna go lengthwise here. And of course my plastic wrap is gonna be a mess because I'm laying it right on here with all this sugar and filling and that's okay. You know, another fun thing, um, there's so many options for this cookie. Like, you could go heavy with the theme. You could make these for any holiday. You could tint your dough and change up the fillings. It does say to wrap them tightly, so tightly we shall. I'm just gonna kind of roll mine here. All right, that is one palmier log done. You can see it's gotten pretty loose since I've been working with it. That's because that butter is starting to melt. Wrap this, stick it in the fridge, do your next one. And then when we come back in an hour, these have to sit in the, I'm sorry, don't put them in the fridge, stick them in the freezer for at least an hour. You can also leave them in the freezer overnight. We're gonna come back and get the oven going to 425. 425 yeah so before you pull these out of the freezer heat up your oven to 425 and I'll see you back in an hour and through video magic we are back after an hour 
So when you're ready to bake these, you're gonna get them out of the freezer and let them sit on the counter for 10 minutes while your oven heats up to 425. Um, and then we're gonna unwrap the first one and start slicing. Now the recipe says that you need to slice these one third of an inch thick. Since I can't judge distance, I have my teeny tiny little ruler. I love this because I just dump this in the dishwasher. So, all right, third of an inch puts me, oh, this, these are gonna be teeny tiny, that's okay. Um, get the first one done and then I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. Look, little tiny cookies. So we're gonna slice these and they're supposed to be an inch apart on the baking dish. Oh, that's super, I don't know if you can see this. Let me readjust. So you can see the filling in there. And if your ends are wonky, like the end of your roll is wonky, just discard that because these are gonna need to lay flat. I'm kind of putting mine on the baking sheet at an angle here. These are cute. Oh, I'm really glad I picked this recipe. Hopefully they taste as good as they look. So the bake on this is a little, it's not complicated, but it, there are some steps to it. You're not just gonna put these in the oven and then pull them out of the oven. I mean, you are, but you're gonna do that a couple times. So once you get these all cut, and I may have to do more than one batch here, um, and on your cookie sheet, you're going to put the cookie sheets in your oven. See, I can't cut and talk at the same time. I'm gonna lose a finger that way. Um, you're gonna bake these for nine minutes. That's the first bake. These are gonna go in the oven twice. So you're gonna bake them for nine minutes until they just start to look like they're browning on the edges, just very, very lightly. Um, and then you're going to take them out of the oven and put them on a rack. And I think just the baking sheets on a rack for two minutes. And then you're going to very carefully turn the cookies over and then you're gonna put them back in the oven for three to five minutes. And it does say that you gotta watch them. I don't know, watch them for what? Are they gonna do tricks? Maybe, who knows? I'm kind of having to hold my roll together when I slice through here. Please be careful and don't slice the finger off. That would be no good for anyone. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do more than one batch or more than one tray, more than two trays. It says two trays, but I have a lot of cookies here, so. Go me. <laughs> Maybe I'm slicing them too thin. Now I'm, now I'm rethinking this. It might be that I'm going too thin. Let me get my little ruler here. Third of an inch, no, that's a third of an inch. So I'm like spot on. Um, I just have a lot of cookies. So, all right, that's one tray done. And going on the other one. Maybe I'm not putting them on my tray in the most, I should Tetris these, but I wanna make sure that there's enough room because usually when you have a dough with this much butter in it, it's going to expand some. So, and then that end, I'm not even gonna to try to bake that. All right. Next roll. Oh, and I did, I did end up putting my little round ones in the freezer. Um, so we'll see how those bake. Oh my gosh, I hate plastic wrap so much. It's terrible for the environment and it's a real pain to work with. At the same time, like the beeswax stuff, I can never get that to work right. So. Yeah, this end is wonky too, so I'm just gonna cut this off. 
And then here we go. So <laughs> this other log that I did, the first one is actually very even. This one is not, it, one side is a lot bigger than the other. I would imagine that this is something that just takes some practice. I also feel like I'm not, I think I started cutting these at an angle. Oops, that's okay. I am excited to try these though. I usually don't love a, a fruity type of cookie unless they're orange shortbread. I love orange shortbread or like a lemon. So I guess I can't say I don't really love fruity cookies, but I tend to stick with the citrus flavors. Um, I like strawberry flavor. I just don't like strawberries. It's a texture thing. Can't get over it. So hopefully these will be a pleasing texture and completely delicious. That is the hope. Anyway, I think I might fit all of these on here. I'm probably putting them a little too close together, but what are you going to do? I don't want to have to do multiple rounds in the oven. So hopefully these won't spread out as much. Yeah, I think I'm going to fit all of these on. So I've got one tray where they're all pretty spaced out, and then I've got the other tray where they're pretty close together. We'll see what happens. Chaos baking. <laughs> um, okay. Those are, I'm a mess. Let's see, where did my towel go? Okay, well, new towel. <laughs> okay. Ugh. All right, my oven is taking a little while to heat up, but it should heat up soon. Nine minutes in, pull them out, let them rest on hot pads for two minutes, make a timer, gently flip them over, put them back into the oven for three to five minutes or until the edges start to brown. Do, 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 three to five minutes. Yes. So it doesn't say that, but that's generally what it is. Your edges are going to get a little golden. Then you're going to put them on wire racks and cool them completely. We will come back when I'm getting ready to do that. And then we will talk about your different glazing options. I'll see you back soon. All right, the timer's going off. This is the first bake. So I'm going to pull these out of the oven and I've got my heat pad sitting here to put them on. They've been in for nine minutes. Oh, wow. That center is sizzling and bubbling. And it looks really neat. Hey Google, set a two minute timer for cookies, please. Okay. Okay, so these are gonna sit here for exactly two minutes and then I'm gonna use my favorite cookie turner I love this thing. I don't even know what, it's from Ikea. Hey Google, home screen. Um, I found this at Ikea and it's got a really thin edge on it so it's super easy for me to get underneath cookies and turn them. I may have to switch up the trays because the tray on the top is starting to get nice and golden on the edges whereas the one that was on the bottom is not. So when I put those back in, I'm gonna make sure that I adjust those. So the reasoning behind letting these sit for a few minutes and then flipping them is to keep the filling inside because what happens to sugar when it gets hot, it melts. Melting things get gooey and tend to run. So we are going to wait the full two minutes I'm putting the spatula down. Okay, let's talk glazing options per the recipe, which I'm going to look at now. Um, you can glaze these. It is optional. I haven't decided if I'm gonna glaze mine or not. It's a pretty simple glaze. It is two and one fourth cups of powdered sugar, sifted, because you don't want lumps. Um, two tablespoons of light corn syrup or dark corn syrup, and three to four tablespoons of seedless raspberry puree. 
So let's see here. I guess you just mix it all up. Yeah, you just mix those three things together, whisk it until smooth. Um, it should be as thick as honey and fall from the spoon in a thick ribbon that then kind of gets reabsorbed after a couple seconds. If yours isn't, add a little bit more of the puree to it until you get to that consistency. Or you could just go with regular icing, uh, which is just sugar, water, um, or milk. That's a glaze that you could do. Again, I'm undetermined on what I'm gonna do here. Um, I may, two minutes is up already. All right. Your cookie timer is up. Hey Google, stop the timer. Okay, so, oh yeah, you do have to be careful because they're not quite set, so they could absolutely unroll on you. Um, ooh. I mean, I guess you don't really need a turner. I'm doing this by hand now because these are so, <laughs> these are so close together that it's tricky to get the turner in there. And I'm having the kind of day where I don't, feel heat anyway so if I burn myself I'm not gonna feel it that much shout out to anyone else that has numb fingers and toes okay and then these are gonna go back in for three to five minutes you're gonna want to watch them the edges should start to get brown These are such delicate little cookies. I think the only time I've ever made a cookie quite this delicate is when I made spiderweb cookies one time. That was fun. And when I say fun, I mean it was not. It was a very thick type of cookie dough that you had to pipe out into a spiderweb. So my hands were hurting after that, but the cookies turned out really cute. So I did have some of the filling escape some of these on one side um, and then others not so much. So it looks like it'll be hit or miss as to what's going to be pretty and what won't be. But let's stick these back in the oven, this tray on top this time. I really feel like my oven might be just a little bit wonky. All right, I'm gonna set the timer for three minutes and then we'll check on them. In the meantime, you're gonna to wanna to set your cooling racks up. Now, I also have this tray of these little round cookies. Some of them have the coarse sugar on top. I'm gonna to throw these in after. Um, but you're gonna to have to move them from the racks to cooling trays, especially if you're going to be glazing them at all. So what I like to do is I like to have a big baking sheet and then I have my, my base rack here, which is just like a cheap rack. But then I have my good ones. And I found that my good ones, I have this set of three that stack. And I figured out that these will actually stack on top of my base one as long as I get it in all of the corners. And then I can just build from there. I love these. I use these so often. If I'm making cupcakes and things like that, they sit on here to cool, especially during cookie season. Oof, these get a workout. All right, so now we wait and come back and see. I like that my oven gives me a one minute alert. It just kind of gives me a, a little quick beep when I've got one minute left on my timer. So these were in for three minutes and then I added another two, so we'll see. So we don't want to overbake them. There's nothing in here that's going to hurt you like with last week with the bacon tarts. So, all right, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, those are done. Just starting to be nice and golden. I'm gonna set these over here. Oh, can't turn off my oven because I'm putting these little circles in and we'll see how they do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in for 10 minutes. 
and see what happens. So these are so, so cute. I love them so much. Um, they're just very, I probably shouldn't even touch it because I know it needs to set up, but let's see. Oh, my arms are so short. <laughs> um, it doesn't say how long they need to sit, but I'm thinking a while because they're kind of leaving like a jam. Um, they smell so, so good. I was worried about using strawberry instead of raspberry, but these smell great. Um, so if you're gonna add in a glaze, and again, I'm still not sure where I'm landing on the glaze. It, I love glaze, it tastes good, it looks pretty, but it's such a pain to do. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of done baking now. <laughs> Also, I'm coming off of a back injury. I think this is the longest that I've been on my feet in like four days. I went to pick up a stack of boxes, not knowing what was in the boxes, thinking I could grab the stack of three. And I got them probably like eight inches off the ground before I realized it was way too heavy for me and I should put them down immediately. But because I'm stubborn and it takes a while for those random thoughts to process, I went ahead and picked them up completely and then shuffled them out the door to where they needed to go. Um, and then a few days later, I started to feel it. And then a couple days later, I could hardly walk. So, so I'm coming off of a back injury and I think I'm not gonna glaze my cookies because of that. Because I'm gonna go sit on an ice pack for a while um, so that I can function for the rest of the day. But I will start putting these on the cooling rack so that I can cool them down and try them and let you know how mine taste. So this is gonna take a minute. I'll see you back in a minute. Okay, my cookies are cooled and they taste great. The flavor is very subtle, and I don't know if that's because I use strawberry instead of raspberry, so I've decided I am gonna go ahead and glaze mine. Now, I don't have any strawberry puree on hand, um, so I just went with a basic glaze. It's powdered sugar, corn syrup, and a little bit of water for consistency. Um, it's doing just like what it says, ribbons. I could add food coloring to this, but I'm not going to because I found some Valentine sprinkles, so I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna dip half, kinda let some of it fall out. I'll scrape the excess off there. Um, and these are fully cooled, and then I'm gonna set it down. I'm gonna add just a few little heart sprinkles. There we go, that's super cute. I'm fighting the urge to get out the tweezers and really just like <laughs> place the sprinkles on there. So let's see, scrape off our excess there. I can probably get most of these dipped and then add the sprinkles. So the corn syrup will keep this glaze from drying out. But I was thinking about it. You know, you could do so many different flavor combinations. Um, fruit and chocolate usually go really well together. So you could do a chocolate ganache type of glaze. Um, you could go with a vanilla or I don't know, what are some other, use your imagination here. I don't think there's any right or wrong to what you wanna do with these things. And we're not limited to raspberry and strawberry. It's whatever kind of freeze dried fruit you can get your hands on, honestly. I don't think there's any rule that says that it needs to be one of the two obviously the recipe called for raspberry and I'm using strawberry and that's okay use your imagination get wild get crazy get chaotic we love chaos here that's because we've had to embrace it because chaos is just naturally what occurs in my house and I'm okay with that there's nothing wrong with it so these are totally cute 
totally good. They do get firm once they cool, which is nice. I was really worried that they would just kind of fall apart, but they set up very nicely. And I'm really happy with this recipe. So I want you to try this recipe, use your imagination or follow the recipe to the letter. There's nothing that says that you have to get creative with this. It's a good recipe the way that it's written. It's excellent. But I want you to bake this because it's fun and it's tasty and I said so. And then I want you to share your photos and I want you to tag me in on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, you can find us. The link is below or go over to the Facebook page. We're having lively conversations about some of these bakes and walking through progress photos and things like that. So you can join in the fun over there. But yeah, this is a winning bake and I'm really, really happy about it. And I wanna know if you enjoyed it as well. Well, that's it for week five of our 2024 baking challenge. I hope that you baked along. I hope that you tag me in your finished bake and I hope that you tune in next week for week number six. Ah! So week number six, I'm gonna give you a hint. We're not actually baking anything, but we are making something. It's very on point for Valentine's Day. It's gonna be messy, but the tasty things often are. If you enjoyed this video or you just wanna tune in to see the chaos baking, you can hit that subscribe button below and I will see you next week. Now remember, on Wednesday, on Facebook and Instagram, those links are down below, I post the ingredient list for the upcoming bake. That gets posted between eight and nine on Wednesday mornings, and our baking videos get posted between eight and nine on Saturday mornings. So stay tuned, and I'll see you next week. can't stop eating these. I don't even like strawberry. These are good.